Hello and welcome to another one of our videos where today we're going to be looking at hamstrings and really understanding what these this group of muscles really does um, because I think they're very misunderstood. Um, so if along with probably the upper traps I'd say the hamstrings are pretty much rated public enemy number one in terms of exercise and and when it relates to injury and even sporting performance and you know uh, most people when they think of back pain think of hamstring trouble you know uh, many sporting athletes sprinters football players soccer players you know hamstring troubles are always sort of a common part of a, a sport and you always see hamstring stretches are very much a cornerstone of many people's stretching program and if you join a yoga class there'll be probably 30 minutes of doing excessive amount of hamstring um, stretching you know just everyone believes that their hamstrings are stiff and tight you know, not many people think that they are loose, and the ones that do probably overdo it like this. Um, you know, deadlifts, great exercise, um, but again, like real misunderstanding of of how this muscle actually works and and why it's actually very important to you. So, let's have a look at this in more detail. So, firstly, you need to understand what they do and where they are. So, there's actually it's not just one muscle. There's actually uh, four of them really. So. Um, there's sort of uh, these are the muscles here. I won't go into anatomy for you and bore you, but basically all you need to really know is that they cross and act upon two of the joints, being the hip and the knee. So it means that they have a crucial role to play around these joints and and and, and affect the things that we do for movement. So daily things like just simply walking, running if you're sports and jumping. Um, these guys are playing a pivotal role in how that those things work. Um, they more or less act as your brakes and, and they sort of oppose the quadriceps and try to decelerate the, the movement of the knee. Right, so they're very, very important to the function of the knee. Um, so during tw sprinting, twisting, turning, hamstrings the fire eccentrically, which means that they contract when they're in a lengthened position. And basically that is to slow the lower leg and prepare the foot for ground contact. So they act very much as a stabilizer and they prevent the quads from blowing out your knee as you would see in an ACL tear. So um, a lot of research shows that you know, weak hamstrings are a very good predictor of an ACL injury, hence why it's a real problem for females. So, But and as well as the, the knee problems that they pose, they also play problems at the joint above the, the or the, sorry, the hip, um, which then affects the joint above the hip being the spine because it's really going to play a role in how we bend over and pick things up. Um, you know, and this is where we see a lot of people with a lot of limited movement through the spine and they can feel real hamstring st stiffness um, and real tight sort of feeling. But um, this, is where, this is where they struggle to touch their toes and do things like this. But, and, and to correct it, their, their method for fixing that is like logical. Well, if I can't got tension here and I can't bend over, I must if I loosen that up I should be able to get over and it seems to make sense but there's a big problem with that so the, you really have to ask yourself why are they tight in the first place so the tightness is there for a reason and it's your job to find out what that reason is so just stretching the effect of the is not really going to change anything so because um, basically the hamstrings are acting what we like what we call a slave muscle and it means that they are going to pick up the workload of anyone else that's not doing the job. And they're there to actually save you. Their tension and their stiffness is there for a reason, to protect you. So to remove the only thing that's left protecting you is not a very smart thing. And usually the one of the muscles that is not working are the glutes. And these guys are prone to laziness. And when they're prone to laziness, there's a guarantee that the hamstrings are going to double, triple, quadruple their workload to make up for the fact that these guys are just not doing it. When that happens, stiffness in movement happens um, and pain is not far away. So, so we've got two reasons um, that a lot of people think that they're tight when they're actually not tight in the hamstrings at all. So the first example would be where we would actually classify this as taut. Um, and this is where we see this in a posture that's like this one here. Where, and this is very common to females, but also in some males, it's a very common posture, where the, the pelvis is tilted too far forward, which basically stretches the hamstring up. And you can see the arrow here. This, this tilted pelvis pulls that hamstring into 
more tension. So basically the hamstring is being lengthened, it's actually being stretched while you're just standing still. Um, and then as a, res as a side effect of that, it's, it actually tries to pull itself back and tries to prevent you from excessively um, extending your back and you can see this is what's happening here. So it's actually trying to prevent it by creating tension. It's trying to pull you down so you don't crunch and, and create facet joint sprains, SIJ disorders, all that sort of stuff. So, But basically because it's on a maximum length of tension, this is where it's actually taut and it's not tight at all. It's actually, it's actually being stretched. So the worst thing you could do to someone like this is start stretching them. Even though they tell you that they're, they're tight and they may look like it, it's nothing to do with the hamstring. It's everything to do with the reason this pelvis is tilted, which will be actually the opposite. It'll be to do more with the hips. Um, so this is a real hip problem, not a, not a hamstring problem. They're taking away your stiffness is not a good thing. All right, so um, you'll find with these people, because it's on a maximum tension, when you start applying load to it, it fatigues really, really fast. And again, the glutes are not working, because if the glutes were, they'd be actually pulling you into a posterior tilt, not an anterior tilt. All right, so that's the first example. The second one's neural tension. This is again where you see someone, and usually this is someone when you lift their leg up and they can hardly, they're lucky to get 45 degrees on a hamstring stretch. Um, and again, it looks like there's a problem with the hamstring, but it has nothing to do with the hamstring. It has everything to do with the nerves. And they're usually being trapped somewhere around the lumbar, lumbar spine. So this is very common to, this is basically the sciatica, and you can see this is the, the nerve where it's running through. So there can be a referral pain anywhere down there, but it's usually being trapped around here. And then it's, then you, basically this nerve can't go into a stretch because it's being stood on, <laughs> more or less. Um, and person, you'll know for sure, there's an easy way to spot this is, um, person will get pins and needles in their legs, or maybe even a pain in the calf. Um, n n not in the hamstring or behind the knee because it's normal to actually feel it behind the knee but when you have a straight leg test and you feel it anywhere else um, then you know that that's a sciatic nerve entrapment somewhere that you've got to find so you've got to actually so to get rid of it you've got to actually get whatever's trapping that nerve and, and there's a lot of things that I won't go into big detail about that there's um, links in the description of this video that you can find with more information on that but just understand that this is a protective tension it's actually trying to stop you from ruining your back so it's trying to stop you from bending over because that's what's that's what's causing your nerve entrapment in the first place all right um, and things that we would use to free that up would be nerve flossing um, which again look in the link in the video here and all of uh, in the description of the video and I've got a link for the nerve floss for you so the worst thing for both of those cases is to stretch it. Even though it looks stiff and it's tight, it's not. It's nothing to do with it. It's there. That stiffness is there to protect you for two different reasons. Um, one's to stop you crunching your back in extension. The other one's to try and uh, stop you from bending over and creating a, a worse problem with your bulging disc factor that you may uh, may not even know that's there. So, so you in the anterior tilt, the the key really is to strengthen the hamstring, not not weaken it and resolve the problem of the hips pulling you into anterior tilt and the glutes being in weakened position. And the neural tension is find a, a solution to the nerve entrapment and until you do that you'll always have continuing problems. All right, So these are some examples that we may use for the, some of those cases and these will all be difficult exercises for those two people that we just mentioned. Um, so how do you assess yourself to see if you have got like a true short and tight hamstrings? Well, to do that, you really need to, you have to be in a posterior tilt and when you're in a lax position. So um, you'll easily see that when you're lying flat on the ground if the person has little uh, lumbar curve and there's like there's no gap between their floor and their lower back. Um, you can even do this against the wall, you'll even see that as well. Um, we'll also see it when we do something like a waiter's bow, which is like a, like a deadlift test really. Um, and this person will round out almost straight away. On the, on the hamstring stretch, they may even get to there, but they'll go into a real um, tipped under position, and this leg will be bent and almost coming off the ground. That's telling you that they don't have good control of the pelvis. All right, so again, that's a hip problem, not a hamstring problem. Um, and when, what we see on that, when we ask someone to um, lift their hip, is what we see we call as a hip pelvis um, disassociation. They just can't. They can't actually 
lift their leg without using their spine to do so. So, so to lift their knee to there, they have to bend their spine. They can't actually um, lift their hip properly. So this person will have a tight hamstring, but not as a result of a tight hamstring, more as a result of just poor hip mechanics and poor, uh, poor movement strategy, really. So, so again, you can see how this is gets into a lot of grey areas here, and people are just stretching their hamstrings all the time, and, but they're never really getting anywhere. And if any anything, and if they do start to get something, they're actually weakening the last thing that they had that was helping them. And they, the the thing all along that they needed to do was uh, not being addressed. Um, now, if you can do a stretch like this, and keeping good um, the the leg flat on the floor like so, good posture, not not rounding under. This means you do not need to improve your flex hamstring flexibility. You actually should just maintain it, but don't improve it. Stretching beyond this point now exposes you to hypermobility at the hip and back and everything. Some people might do well with it, but generally speaking, it's not a good thing, especially if you play sports. You really just need to have it where it's optimal balance between the, the hips and the quads and, that, um, and the hamstrings and glutes. Everything's in where it needs to be. You don't want to play with play around with that and try and crank it out with heaps of yoga all right um, so the danger of too much saying this you know doing stuff like this is just crazy um, and again if you're playing sports doing stuff like this is a great way to sort of get you closer to an ACL problem and low back problems as well so um, because yeah, as you can read through here the hamstrings are working in combination with the ACL to resist the forward movement of the tibia that the quads produce and if they're in a weakened and lengthened position all the time, they just can't stop it. And you, you, you know, you're basically just going to let that knee flex right over the, uh, the the femur, flex right over the tibia, and bang you in all sorts of trouble. So, so too much is never a good thing. Assessing weakness. So if we looked at assessing tightness, assessing weakness. So, well, there's many ways to do this, and these are just two of the simpler ways that I might do it. Um, Great for beginners, people with back pain and stuff. This is a good one, and you usually see cramping quite quickly. So all you got to do is just lie down. Again, these are, these are videos on our YouTube channel. You can look up, um, but very very simple. Um, you just got to lift your leg off the ground and push that heel to the roof. Hold it for 60 seconds. If you can't do that for that time and you get cramping in the hamstring or pain in the lower back and fatigue, you know you've got a glute weakness. All right, and you're always going to have hamstrings kicking in to make up for that. Um, and a se another secondary test of that might be the hip extension. I might do it on the floor even. I don't even need it on a ball. Um, and I just ask the person to lift their butt up off the ground with one leg, hold it for 10 seconds. And again, uh, someone who overloads in the hamstrings because the glutes aren't kicking in, it happens pretty quick. A pretty big cramp kicks in almost instantly. Um, you know, so it's an easy way to sort of assess, okay, my hamstrings are always going to remain stiff and tight until I address the real problem, which is my weak glutes, and they're there to make up for them. If I take them away, and I, have, and I don't have them either, well, what have I got left? I've got nothing, all right? So you don't really want to stretch them. You want to just resolve the weakness instead. Um, what about touching the toes? This is always brought up with the hamstrings. It's like, oh, but I can't touch my toes, Nick. Um, it's a very unreliable test. Um, there's just so many factors, as you've already seen, as to why you may not be able to do it, and you know, uh, poor movement mechanics where you just don't move your, sh your sh shift your weight backwards behind you so a lot of people just bend entirely at the spine and don't use any hip movement um, that's that, that's just a poor strategy of moving so basically the hamstrings are going to just try and really act as a break to stop you from bending at your spine so they're trying to save your spine by not letting you touch your toes so um, so a stiff lower back could be someone who's actually got too much extension um, like we saw with their anterior tilt um, stiffness in the neck and thoracic spine, so sometimes it's the upper back that's actually limiting you and you can't get down there for that reason. And around the, t the calves, around the feet, you know, a lot of people are very, very stiff around there and you've got too much tension at the bottom because you're actually falling forward too much. Um, there's no way you're going to go any further, all right? So th th they're all reasons that you may not be able to get over and none of them are due with the hamstrings, all right? So, so it's why it's such an unreliable test. Um, what about the strengthening side of it? Well. The strengthening side of it, because if you know your anterior tilt, you need to just tighten it up like I've told you. Well, a lot of people start using this sort of stuff: glute hammy raises, Nordic curls, um, you know, isolated even leg curls on machines. The problem with these is 
it's it, it's really just tr it's no different to the stretch it's just trying to fix like the core the effect but not the cause and and the really you you really need like these glutes to be heavily involved because as you've seen they are really the problem that you ha having the hamstring problem in the first place so um you know there's some great benefits to doing these nordic curls for like getting eccentric strength through the knee so which means in you know, a strengthening a length and position but um but like I was saying, the problem is usually the hamstring kicking in to make up for the weakness of the glute. So in running, these glutes are crucial to you. In single leg stance, glutes are crucial to you. And that they can do so many things that the hamstring cannot do. Um, but that if they switch off, they have no choice but to, can, to pick up and have a go anyway. And if they're working at explosive speeds, it's inevitable you're going to tear them. Um, so you you know an exercise like this is a much better choice than this one and both of these are going to give you a hamstring um, work and strength this one just has the added bonus of being mainly glutes with the hamstring all right so um so the single leg deadlift is always the better choice all right um the four things you always need to do when you want to strengthen and you know specifically to alleviate a weakness and through the hamstrings or posterior chain and you really want to um, work through pelvic stability, hip, working on your hip and ankle mobility so you don't have any restriction there, and address your weak glutes and make sure that you're addressing any dysfunctional patterns of movement so with squatting, lunging, bending they're, they're really your key ones there so you, you've got to really address that if there's any because you could do all the three of these but you've got something wrong there it's just going to override that the minute you move because you know it's just going to go to stiffness to be able to do what you want to do so that's where a lot of work on these specific things do a great job but really don't move very well all right so you've got to do all four of these um, failure to do that just leads to continuation of your problem and you'll always have stiffness there and you'll always never be quite as good as you should be um, so best exercises well this video would go for like two hours if i was to give you all the exercises but you know some of the working for pelvic stability you know like some abdominal control and this one's a great test again this is links in the description for these um, the single leg deadlift what we spoke about for glutes uh, this really is the the movement one this sort of puts all these ones together in one hip mobility you know these are just stretches but there's many drills that we may use and isolated glute strength as well so you work on those and you'll really alleviate your hamstring problem so you ironically you can improve your flexibility from doing no stretching and doing this you know um, because you, you're sort of alleviating the reason it was becoming stiff um, yeah which takes a lot for people to get their head around that that concept but um, again read the description because there's a link for an article with more detail on all this for you um, now if you've got any questions or comments this go check out our website there's free reports you can grab like the functional training one if you've got knee trouble I highly um, encourage you to get our, our program here on that and if you've got back trouble I highly encourage you to get the program on that because they be, have the specific things to address what we've just spoken about alright so I hope you've enjoyed that video and we'll see you on one of our next ones